I'd like to show you why knowing your why is the start of your journey. Without a strong why, it can be so difficult to reach your maximum potential. My name is Dr. Jason Ballara, and every week I meet with real estate investors and mindset specialists that are taking action in order to build a life according to their own terms. We will break down what drives successful people and allows them to achieve at such a high level. If you are a professional wanting to break through, or simply someone that wants to hear an inspiring story, the Know Your Why podcast is made for you. Hi everyone, I'm Jason Ballara, and this is the Know Your Why podcast. Today I'm here with Cowboy Joe Marquez. Cowboy Joe has a 39-year work experience uh, in construction, project management, and real estate development, as well as environmental remediation. Uh, he's been involved in a wide range of projects, uh, valuing from 1.2 million up to 100 million plus. So um, Cowboy Joe, thank you for coming on the podcast today. Thank you for having me, Jason. Uh, looking forward to it. I love discussing both real estate and mindset. Uh, I truly believe that mindset is the key to where you want to go in life, regardless of what you do in life, whether it be real estate or anything else. Awesome. Well, maybe what you could do is just start by telling the listeners a bit about yourself and your background and kind of, you know, where you're at today and, and go ahead and tell us your, your story. Well, I was raised on a ranch. Uh, I made the joke that my granddaddy was a carpenter by trade. He just ran cattle to support it because that's how I pretty much got the love for land development. We were constantly improving pastures, clearing underbrush, uh, clearing fence lines, and building literally every building on the ranch. Needed a new barn, he built it. Uh, meat processing plant, we built it. Stockyard, we built it. Uh, equipment sheds, houses, all of that. So I, I really grew to love land and improving land more than the building. Um, but was that was not my original career path. I majored in environmental science, was going to be a wildlife biologist and game warden. Went to work for a little bitty company called Waste Management Incorporated, doing environmental remediation literally all over the world. I've been in 16 foreign countries and 49 of the 50 states. Long story short, transitioned into the private sector and did some really big land development projects with others. And between not vetting people that I was involved with and then the bubble in 2006 through eight, went broke. I was a multimillionaire, went to less than zero and started doing the exact same strategy that I had done that made me successful the first time around, made me a lot of money and was going nowhere. I was actually going backwards. That's where I ran into one of my mentors and now close friend that I also coached for his Aligned Performance Institute, Dr. Alok Trevetti. And with his rewiring my brain, I went from being worth negative $50,000 to over a million dollars in a year and a half. Again, doing the exact same strategy, but I changed my story and state, which is your mindset. Strategy, let's face it, anybody that has been successful in a strategy before, that's a proven strategy. Some may have better odds than others of being successful of that particular strategy, but it's a proven strategy. The most critical S's of, three, of the three S's in success is your story and your state. And when I say story, that's what story are you telling yourself? Um, I'm too old. I'm not good with names. I'm not good with numbers. Um, as a kid, this happened to me, so I can't do this. Whatever it is, it's a BS story. And for those of you who are not country, BS stands for bullshit. Because that's exactly what it is. Any story that you're telling yourself is BS. Uh, there's two sides to every moment. It's our perception does not allow us to see it. So what story are you telling yourself? Realize that it's a BS story and that you can accomplish whatever it is. You have the necessary skills to accomplish whatever comes into your mind because it wouldn't come into your mind if you didn't have the underlying skills to accomplish it. Do you need to improve the skills? Yes. And then the third S is state. That's emotional state. And I'm gonna tell you 
anger, resentment, shame, and guilt kill more people than everything else in this world combined. When you bury it deep and harbor it, it destroys the body. And I, I can tell you that from personal experience because I was literally breaking down my body with those emotions stored inside me. And that's why I was not able to go anywhere. Although I was doing the exact same strategy that I had done in the past because of the events that I had been through and my perception of those events, I wasn't able to move forward. Whereas on the flip side of that, gratitude, when you can get into the state of gratitude and joy, that's an internal thing. You can be grateful for where you're at, regardless of what happens, and realize that everything happens for you, not to you, because I can look back over my life and what was the absolute worst thing I was going through at the moment turned out to be the best thing that happened to me at that point in time and got me to where I am now. And happiness, that's another one. Everybody wants to chase happiness, but do you know what happiness is if you haven't experienced sadness? Yeah, you have both. You're going to oscillate around a mean between happiness. You're going to have moments of happiness. You're going to have moments of sadness. The key is to realize that those are moments and that they're temporary. Be grateful in that moment, whether it's a happy moment or a sad moment. Be grateful for where you are and what you're doing, and what you have. The more grateful you are, the more you can create and move into the space that you want to move in. So the key is to be grateful and love where you're at and love yourself. The universe brings things into our lives as mirrors that we judge. And the only reason we judge it is because we see it somewhere in ourselves, maybe in a different form, but learning to love all parts of ourselves. the more we learn to love ourselves and where we're at, the greater we have room to grow and evolve. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I mean, that's great advice. And you're, I, I think uh, you can really sort of change your mindset on, on almost anything given a bit of time and perspective, right? So as you said, you can't, you can't experience happiness. If you haven't experienced sadness, you need to know kind of what the, what the other sides look like, the, the ups and the downs. Um, so uh, on that note, I mean, having gone through that, you know, as a developer, I, I feel like I wasn't doing any real estate in 2008 other than my own house. I sort of got lucky timing wise, but I know, you know, that market crash hurt a lot of people. And as a developer, my understanding is, you know, kind of that was probably development was hit the hardest. What, how, how did you kind of, I mean, what, maybe walk us through your mindset and kind of what well how that path looked for you and then how you came out the other side you know sort of feeling better and, and getting back on track as you said it, it wasn't you didn't change strategy so so how was how did that look to you some at, at that level well as i said when you're going through the moment it's the worst thing that ever happened to you and i'll, I'll tell you i'll be straight up honest. I mean, I was depressed uh, because of going through that. And I'll say loss because most people think of gain or loss when actually it's just transformation. But that loss, I went through a very rough divorce. But that, again, was one of the best things that happened to me because I'd been in a miserable marriage for years, a relationship for years because of the kids. Mm -hmm. um, I lost a lot of money, but again, that was huge because that was what gave me to drive. I was structured wrong. Every, the whole key to success in any investment, especially around stable cash flowing investments, is the underlying capital structure. Even short term capital structure is important, but it's critical on longer term investments. And I wasn't structured properly. I was over leveraged. Now I had lines of credit that I thought were reserves, but as we all know, a bank can close a line of credit overnight. So it doesn't matter if you've got a half a million dollars worth of open line of credit and you're thinking that's reserved because the bank can close it the next morning. Uh, somebody, somebody asked me how I know that. Uh, so the, the key components of capital structure are the debt, the equity that you use, and then reserves. 
if you think of debt as weight, any given investment, any given project can only carry so much weight. And then the rest has to be filled in with equity. Equity is what also helps that project carry the weight. And then your reserves are put in place. So if that project ends up needing to lose some weight, it can support that through that downturn period to where you can manage to keep the project. You can take two exact projects. Let's just 100 unit apartment complexes. They can be side by side, exact same build, exact same everything. One investor buy it and use too much debt. The other investor and have the proper capital structure under it. If there is a downturn, which there always will be, it's just a question of when, one will lose that property and the other one will continue to cash flow. In fact, the odds are the person that is structured properly will buy the one that went down because he knows it's in a good area and that it's going to do the same thing that his project's doing. So he doubles up what his size was, whereas the other lost everything he had. Yeah, that's and that event is what helped me to seek out the best people on the face of the earth to learn capital structures around so that I do not repeat that. So did, do you feel like that was, you know, sort of a big shift for you in, in terms of what you were doing, had been doing before and then after is just maybe uh, not being over leveraged and, and changing your, your capital structure? Well, um, not being over leveraged, realizing that any, really any business, but I tell people, everybody, a land development is a relationship business. And truly vetting people that you want to do business with. I, I, like I said, I had some partners I didn't vet. And I was actually recently at a uh, mastermind and I was talking about looking for heart-centered equity partners. And one of the guys said, no, you don't need to look for heart-centered people. You only need to look for people with money. And I said, no, sir, there's plenty of people with money. I'm only going to do business with people that I can develop long-term relationships with. And I only develop long-term relationships with people that are heart centered, meaning that they think with their heart as much as they do the brain and they create win, win, win situations because a win lose proposition is ultimately a lose, lose proposition in the long run. So I focus on win, win, win. If everybody's not winning, it's not worth doing it as far as I'm concerned. I think that's, I mean, I love that. I love that sort of heart-centered uh, investor type of mentality. I don't think it's very common. I feel like, you know, you, you, everybody talks about relationships and things like that, but it, you don't necessarily hear a lot about people saying, you know, I want to work with people that think with their heart. Sometimes probably maybe that gets a little bit of a negative connotation. I don't, I don't agree. I think thinking with your heart is a, is a, tremendous strength but i do think sometimes people think oh that's you know too much emotion in business or or whatever the case may be but but i think that you can you know create a lot of value by by caring uh and so you know working with people that are heart centered and how do you how do you figure that out how when you're uh talking to someone or you're, you know meeting someone new to work with how do you how do you figure that out that they're heart centered how does that i guess how do you, you feel what makes you feel that, that they are? What makes the, that comfort level? Well, I will answer that, but I want to backtrack just a hair on what you said, because, you know, we talk about mindset and really that's a misnomer because you can intellectualize it up here all day long. I've been studying personal growth for 25 plus years before I met Dr. Trevetti. I thought I had the mindset figured out, but until you get it in here into your heart, it, it doesn't move. Your heart is what is the powerhouse of your body and the universe. Um, until you can get your heart and mind congruent, you you can you may have some success here and there, but it will be temporary and it won't be to the scale that it'll be if you get your heart and mind congruent. And the more you get congruent, the more you see it in other people. But you can just ask questions and see if they're focused on their self or are they focused on serving others? Uh, the currency of the universe is service. Uh, Jim Rohn said it, virtually everybody has said it, Bob Proctor said it, 
if you help enough other people get what they want, you automatically get what you want. But I think a better way to say it is service is the currency of the universe. If you serve in your values, with you first you have to determine what your values are. If you serve in your values, working towards your mission, the universe is going to provide you whatever is necessary to accomplish that mission. And it, it's unreal how that works. It's that people talk about synchronicity and different things like that. But it's basically the universe is going to be in balance. Uh, we were put on here to accomplish certain things. If we know what our values are and our mission, and we're working toward that, the universe is going to put all the resources necessary for us to accomplish that mission in our path. Yeah. Yeah, it's very powerful. I think, you know, once you kind of realize that, once you realize that, you know, you, you basically, you're going to get more by giving and by uh, helping others and, and providing value, it, it's, it is a very powerful thing. And, and it, I think sometimes, you know, sometimes some people just do that, right? It seems like it se seems natural to some and, and to some people it's, it has to be, uh, it's, it's very hard shift to make when, when you, so you went through that downturn and you said, um, you know, you got a, a mentor that really helped you get through it. Were there any sort of specific things that you did to sort of shift the way you were thinking and change um, change your mindset at that point so that you could, you know, sort of restart your strategy and have it, you know, sort of get, get back to being successful? Uh, yes, well, literally doing Dr. Trivedi's processes rewires your brain. And, and the biggest thing is being able to go to key moments that were traumas. And when I say traumas, most people don't realize you have both positive traumas and negative traumas. Uh, it's more of a root experience. Anything that you're very one-sided on, you will stay stuck at that moment. Let's, well, Al Bundy um, was a miserable shoe salesman that sat on the couch watching TV because he was still stuck when they won the national championship in high school. And we, I think pretty much everybody knows people like that in their lives that remember the one grand thing they had happened to them in high school and they still revisit that, the glory days. Mm -hmm. And they are going backwards and staying stuck because they're still there. And that that's actually a positive trauma. And people don't realize that that can keep you stuck as well. It's more going back to those moments and seeing both sides. Because, you know, as I said earlier, the universe is always in balance. It's our perception and our awareness that doesn't allow us to see both sides. And the more that we can see both sides in the moment, the faster we move forward. And then the you said something about service uh, earlier and the more you give. One of the keys, though, to remember is making sure that you're in fair exchange, meaning that you know what your worth is and you get fair exchange for that service. You don't give it away per se, because most people give away, and I'm, I was guilty of it, and giving away my knowledge and my value because I didn't feel I was worth the exchange back because of past events. So knowing your, your value first, and that's why I talk about the universe giving you mirrors, to learn to love yourself. The more you love yourself, the more you value yourself and you put service out in your values, that's when you get the fair exchange back and that you make sure that you establish your worth. Because if you don't establish your worth, nobody else is going to establish it for you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very true. And it, it kind of reminds me of something you said at the beginning, you talked a bit about, about uh, you know, like limiting beliefs, I'm too old, I'm too young, whatever. I And I feel like, Limiting beliefs are, are are very powerful. They're very powerful in holding you back, but they're also very powerful if you can move past them in the sense that you know you're realizing that 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 it's really your own only your own mind that's keeping you sort of keeping you from pushing past them. So how how do you how do you, you know, when you're talking to people, how do you help them or address limiting beliefs and kind of help people get past them, you know, with with that sort of 
and I and I ask in, in part because I've probably had almost all of them, and so it's one of the, it's one of those things that you work through, um, and sometimes you just have to kind of push the noise out. But I, I'd wondered if you had, you know, specific uh, recommendations for people and in, in, that are dealing with you know limiting beliefs. Uh, most definitely, uh, the biggest thing is you're you only are limited in your lower values. So like if somebody talks about their procrastinator, they only procrastinate stuff in their lowest values. Uh, in their highest values, they're quick to do whatever it is. Uh, kids being diagnosed with ADD. They're ADD because teachers are boring and they don't teach them stuff. They're not challenged and things like that. If you take a kid that is, quote, diagnosed with ADD and they're playing their favorite game, video game, They've got freaking laser focus. You couldn't drop a bomb and get them off of that focus. That's because that is a high value to them, that game. And the more that you can get, and then you can take people, there's some processes uh, that we won't go into, but you can take them to different moments. For, for example, uh, procrastination. You take them to moments when they didn't procrastinate. And like I said, it's usually in their highest values. And show them where... They're equally good at doing stuff immediately as they are at procrastinating. Because as, as I said, the universe is always in balance. It's our awareness that doesn't allow us to see it. Um, we have 4,628 traits. And we all have every one of them. Some we express in different forms. Some our perception does not allow us to see. The ones that we judge in others are usually the ones that the universe is trying to get us to see in ourselves and love. So it's just a matter of getting people to see that what they say they're not good in, they are equally good in it, but it's in different forms that they're not able to see because they're just not aware of it. They're not looking. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it's easy to, I don't know. It's maybe easy to use those limiting beliefs as a reason or an excuse or something not to not to do something that might be hard. Like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, I'm too old to start investing or I'm too, you know, whatever it is. I don't I'm not good with math, whatever that you know what I mean, whatever the, the case may be that people would say to themselves. I think often it just becomes, you know, sort of a, a convenient reason to not do something that they think might be hard and, and sort of push them outside their comfort zone. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, if you can, if you can redirect, as you were saying, to the to the things that, that you've done that are hard, and why you, you know, why you push through and got those done, I think it, it makes a lot of sense. That's, that's really, uh, really powerful stuff. Um, all right, well, let me kind of shift gears a little bit here. And we'll move to the section of the show where, where I'm going to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. Um, the first one has to do with the name of the show being Know Your Why. So, Joe, what's what's your why? What drives you, you know, to, to be successful? What What's kind of, you know, that motivator for you? Well, and knowing your why is powerful, but mine has actually shifted to a why not, which I believe is even more powerful because... I know that the people need to hear my message in my form because they can hear it from somebody else and it won't resonate and connect with them. But my why not is all the people when I go to bed at night, I think of the people that won't be impacted by my message and make a difference in the world through the ripple effect um, is what motivates me to get up and do what I do every day because I'm literally building an alliance that we can develop the world the way we want it to be, both literally and figuratively. When I say develop the world, I mean both real estate and entrepreneurs' minds, because we can build this world the way we want it to be. It's just going to be a matter of one person at a time and uh, let it expand exponentially through the ripple effect. So that's, that's more of a why not. If I don't do what I do, then I'm not going to have the impact that I was put on this earth to do. Yeah, no, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, 
what are, let me, I guess I sort of back up a little bit. What are you, you know, sort of focused on in, are you, are you focused on sort of mindset and coaching or are you uh, still doing a lot of development? Where, where are your, what does your day look like at this point? What are you kind of, kind of um, really working on? Well, I still do have some active uh, developments myself that I'm direct partners in. Uh, my biggest focus now and probably 80% of my focus is helping my high level students, my one on one students develop their own projects and I work with them on mindset as well. And then the other probably 15% of my day is I'm a coach for Alliance Performance Institute. That's my mentor, Dr. Alok Trevetti. We're good friends as well. And that is with all entrepreneurs own high performance thinking, literally rewiring people's brains. And it's entrepreneurs primarily because that's going to be the biggest ripple effect and getting the message out there to people and getting them to change. And then the real estate people that are involved in that come over and learn real estate strategies from me directly as well. So that's my focus is more on the coaching and mentoring side of things, both in land development strategies, the mindset around land development, and then high performance thinking for entrepreneurs in general. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Um, well, could you tell us something about yourself? Maybe that, that, that isn't common knowledge, something that, that, you know, uh, a, a hobby or a special skill that, that most people don't know about you? Uh, I'll give you a fun fact, and some, a lot of people may have to Google this because it's an older movie. The movie Revenge of the Nerds. Ogre mm -hmm. is pretty much was cast in for me in real life because I was the jock that was secretly a nerd. I still love studying science and math. Uh, uh, I don't know what my IQ is now, but back then it, I scored at a 156. And I was a high level middle linebacker, but was secretly a nerd. The only reason I didn't get picked on was because I was big, strong, and fast, and people <laughs> didn't want to push it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I don't, I, I know that movie well. I wonder, you know, how that, that's obviously, a, I think, a generational thing. But, you know, people that are in their 20s probably don't know <laughs> Revenge of the Nerds, but they should go back and watch it because it's actually a very, very good movie. That's funny. Um, we'll, we'll put it in the show notes, but uh, when people hear this, how, how can they reach out to you uh, and, get, and get in touch? Uh, the best way to contact me is through my website. It's www.cowboyjoe.me. Uh, and then you can navigate and you can do slash services and that'll actually give you a contact page and go to that page because uh, we're gifting a free book, uh, Chasing Success by Dr. Alok Trevetti. That book was what started my rewiring my brain, realizing that the more I chased success, the more it was running from me. My granddaddy actually had a saying, uh, money's a lot like cats. Now people are like, how is money like cats? Well, he, he used to make that saying, and then he'd tell you. He said, the harder you chase money, the more it runs from you. Same as a cat. If you try to chase a cat, it's pretty hard to catch them. Yep. But if you start doing something they're interested in, you can't get them off of you. They'll climb up in your lap, climb all over you, and you're trying to get something else done. But if they're interested in it, then they'll come to you. Well, money's the exact same way. Yeah, yeah. Sound, sounds like your granddad was a pretty, pretty wise man. He's got, got a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, influential quotes there. So that, no, that's, I like that one. Um, all right, last question for you. What, what piece of advice would you give to people uh, that are maybe, you know, they're, they're sort of getting started in, in really whatever it is, real estate development, any, anything entrepreneurial, what, what would you tell them to help, uh, you know, sort of motivate them or, or just, guide them um, on their journey? Well, I would say first thing is figure out what your values are and make sure that you're doing real estate from a standpoint that's something you enjoy doing. You're not trying to do it because somebody told you that was the best way to make money. Because if you hate real estate and you're doing it just to make money, 
the odds are you may make some money short term, but long term, you're not going to be successful. Uh, and I know it sounds cliche and it's something that you have to get in your heart, but do what you love and the money will follow is not a cliche. Uh, it's a matter of figuring out how, and uh, now when I say do what you love, it's got to be something that people won't need, yeah. but there's a way to literally monetize everything on the face of the earth this day and time. Uh, don't, don't chase money through real estate. I love real estate and we'll do it pretty much to a small degree till the day I die, because I, even if I'm full-time coaching, I still love getting my hands dirty occasionally. Yeah. So I would say that that's the biggest thing, knowing what your values are and what you want to do and not subordinating to what other people think you should do is one of the biggest keys I could give you to take away. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a great point because it's, you know, when those of us that are sort of in real estate and, and investing and things like that, very passionate about it and sort of spouting like, this is something everyone should do. It's so powerful and all of that. But yeah, it, it's a great point that if you're, if you, if you don't like it, you know, and you're just going into it for the money, it's probably no different than any other job you might go into just for the money, you know, working hard and, and being, uh, you know, being sort of a slave to a paycheck. So uh, that, I think that's, that's a great point. And I'd, I'd like to have one other thing on that though. Yeah. If, if you do like real estate, it's something that you think you want to pursue get a, really good mentor or coach mm -hmm. and make certain that they walk the walk. There's a ton of people out there that have written books that know less about real estate than you do, but they've written a book. So they're an expert. So make certain that it's uh, people that walk the walk and they've, they're living the life you want to live. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, that's actually, uh, if people say that, right. If you, you're going to get a mentor, um, you know, make sure that they're, whatever it is, they're, they're in real estate currently, whatever, whatever criteria people say, how do you find that out though? How do you, how do you advise people really um, do their due diligence and, and figure out that someone is, you know, not just sort of, Oh, I wrote a book because I wrote a book and said I was a, an, an expert. How, what, what would you tell people about, you know, sort of really being sure? Well, just point blank, ask them. Show, show me the list of the deals you've done in the last five years. Your deals. Yeah. How much money do you make? And if they're not willing to show you, they're not able to back up what they say they can do. Every high level mentor that I know, and I know a ton of them, are perfectly willing to show you what they've done, what they can do. And more importantly, they can show you what they've done for their students. Yeah. No, that's, that's great advice. I, I sometimes I appreciate that. Cause I, I do wonder that sometimes people are like, Oh, make sure your mentor is, you know, actually doing what you want to do. And it, I don't know that it, that information is always out there. So that's, it's very simple. Just, you just have to ask the questions. So great. Well, Cowboy Joe, I, I appreciate having you on. Um, a lot of great advice there. I, I really, uh, I really do think that the listeners will get a great deal of value from it. So, so thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate your time. I, it was my pleasure, Jason. I truly love. Uh, so, like I said earlier, services, the currency, of the universe, and I'm serving in my values. I love learning. I love teaching. I love um, land development and business. So, anytime that I can talk about it and help other people uh, get clarity and move in a direction they want to move in or some key insight that maybe shifts their life. I, I love doing it. I thank you for the opportunity to actually be on the show. So thank you for inviting me to it. Yeah, no, it's, it's been my pleasure. Um, all right, well, with that, we will head out for today. Uh, have a good day, everyone.